Hello brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome back to my channel. I'm in a location change again. I'm back in my dorm room back at college. Spring semester gun hit me hard. So if you haven't seen my last video, go watch it, link in the description. But as I was filming it, I realized that I had way too much stuff to cover and I didn't want to make the video be like forever long. So I made a part two. And for the second week, I'm going to be talking about obedience. But instead of talking about why we should obey God, I'm going to talk to you guys about how we obey God. I think we can all agree that obedience is a very important part of the Christian walk. Obedience allows us to walk through life in the freedom that God intended us to have before Adam and Eve, you know, done messed up. When God created the world, he intended to have a perfect world free of sin and death and all evil. But unfortunately, we live in a fallen world. But obedience is a way that we can start living in the light of eternity today. Just a disclaimer that I feel like I have to make a lot. Our salvation is not dependent on our obedience. Our salvation only rests in the finished work of Jesus on the cross, but a way that we can thank God for our eternal life that he's given us and a way that we can show God that we love him is by being obedient. Psalm 128.1 says, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. If you decide in your heart, after you watch the last video, <laughs> that you have a desire to obey God and what he's calling you to, I want to help you start on this path of obedience. <laughs> or if you're interested in growing in a relationship with God, but maybe you don't have a desire to be obedient, pray that God will give you that desire to walk in obedience with him. There are three parts of obedience that are really vital. And the first one is that we have to know the truth because how can we do what's right if we don't know what's right, if we don't know God's truth. Now there are some things that are very black and white, plain in the Bible, uh, like the Ten Commandments, but there are some things that maybe aren't as black and white. One of those things is finding God's will for our life, which is a whole nother video. If you really have a desire to obey God, but you're not sure that you're doing it, try and reference scripture as much as you can. Um, read scripture that's gonna help you grow in your knowledge of the truth. A way that you can find out about things that aren't so black and white uh, in the Bible is you should find a mentor. Uh, this should be someone who knows and loves God and who knows and loves you. Make sure you seek advice from wise counselors, those that have a strong relationship with the Lord, and those who know you very well. The second part of obedience is we have to surrender our own way, which can be really difficult. In order to surrender our own ways, I think we have to do sort of a self-assessment and we have to start with our heart. Um, what we do outwardly is a direct reflection of our inner state of the state of our heart, the state of our mind. And if you are a born again believer, if you've accepted Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit lives in you. God has come to dwell inside of us so that he's with us all the time. God is the only one who can really change our heart. And if we invite him into every aspect of our life, our hearts are gonna change and then our thoughts are gonna change and our deeds are gonna change. And when it comes to thoughts, we have to be careful what comes into our mind. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. If we want our thoughts to be pure, we can't fill our minds with things that aren't. So we have to constantly watch the kind of music we're listening to, the kind of media we're consuming in general, the type of people that we choose to surround ourselves with. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. By filling our minds with that, we're not going to have room for any of the other garbage. And when we invite God into our heart, when we are careful about what we choose to fill our minds with, our outer state is going to change and we're going to better reflect the light of Christ. Our hearts are going to have more and more of a desire to obey him and to follow him. The third and final part of how to live an obedient life unto Christ is by remembering who God is. Whenever I sit and think about who God is, like really think about it, that inspires obedience in me. There's just there's really no other way to describe it. If we remember that we have the privilege to serve the almighty God, that makes me want to do it. And I know it's easy for me to sit here and talk to you guys about 
how I desire to obey God when I think about who he is, but sometimes when it comes to real life, I forget who God is and I go my own way. A great way to grow in your understanding of God's character is by reading the Bible. Most of you probably have a Bible around your house or maybe you own your own Bible. Maybe there's one that sits on your very nightstand. And if you haven't cracked that open in a while, I inspire you to do so because when we grow in the knowledge of God, that increases our desire to worship him through obedience because obedience really is a form of worship. And if you don't have a Bible, but you have a phone, there's lots of good free Bible apps out there. First John 2, 15 through 17 says, and this is love that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. All these things are interlinked. If we obey God, we show God that we love him. And when we obey God, we also show others that we love them. There are many things in this world that I know many people obey instead of obeying God. But Romans 6.16 6 says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you're slaves to sin, which leads to death, or a slave to obedience, which leads to righteousness. If we aren't obedient slaves to God, then we're obedient slaves to sin and to the evil ways of this world. 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. I'm gonna tell you guys from personal experience because I've chosen disobedience over obedience so many times because I'm human. Uh, God expects me to fail because I'm not perfect and I can't be. But I'm telling you guys right now, every time that I disobeyed God or was delayed even in my obedience of him, it didn't satisfy me. The only promises that we can trust are the promises of God. The promises of the world are so empty. Anything that sin promises you, if it promises to bring you satisfaction, that's false because the only true satisfaction is found in the Lord. If it promises to bring you wealth, it might bring you earthly wealth, but what kind of wealth really matters? is if we have wealth in the Lord. Sin might promise you freedom if you look at Christianity as just a list of rules, but the only freedom comes from Christ and comes from following in the ways of the Lord. As sons and daughters of God, we have the authority to overcome any temptation. We can obey at any time that we want to. We worship the almighty God of the universe and he is the only one that can satisfy. And I'm gonna end with a little bit of a challenge for you. This is a quote from Del Fessenfeld Jr. That's probably not right. He says, partial obedience, delayed obedience, and surface obedience to impress others are not acceptable to God. He is looking for men and women who will respond with instant, complete, wholehearted, and joyous obedience each time he speaks. That is so convicting. If you desire to obey God, pray and ask that he'll give you the guidance to be able to do so. And I hope that I shared some tips today with you that will be able to help you start this journey to obedience. My song for you guys this week is Trust and Obey by Big Daddy Weave. It's a bit of a modern rendition on the classic hymn. And I think that the words really hit the nail on the head with this message that I brought you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please give this a thumbs up if you like today's video. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. Click subscribe, follow me on Instagram. I'll put the scriptures that I used today also in the description. And remember to always choose joy.